Incredible. All right. There it is. Okay. There he is, Mr. Michael Bisping, UFC Hall of Fame inductee. It's not official yet, right? Can't get cocky. I'm not yet. sure. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. No, I, I don't hear myself, but as long as you can hear me, that's all that really matters. But uh, yeah, it's not official yet, Lewis, but why are you going to try and like make it sound like I'm I'm not quite in? I mean, I'm in. Well, I'm in. Not. But I'll. Well, yeah. I'm going to be in. Yeah, I mean, technically, I'm as in the UFC Hall of Fame as you are right now. <laughs> if you want to be technical about it. And you have more of a right, being the undefeated professional superstar oh, that you yeah. are. But uh, but I, I, I'll be honest. Uh, first of all, thank you to the UFC and everybody for doing that incredible piece. Um, the other night, and I may have had a couple of drinks, seeing as I was celebrating, but uh, I couldn't watch it without shedding a little tear. I may have watched it a few times, and I may have <laughs> cried a few times. You know, I may have jerked off once or twice to myself. But um, I had no idea, absolutely zero idea that that was going to happen. And, of course, I was in London. We were in Toronto last week. Then I flew to London, and it was great to be there and work in the event uh, in UFC London, you know, I've been there to a few events recently, but just as a guest this time, obviously now the UFC on ESPN covering the event, it was nice. And we have this documentary crew with us right now. And the UFC said to us, said at some point, do you want to uh, go down in the crowd? You know, like they do the celebrity shots or they show a famous fighter or whatever in the crowd and they come up on the screen. Right. The, U the UFC said, oh, we're thinking of doing one of those shots with you. Uh, would you be down for that? I said, oh, shit, yeah, that'd be great. And then I said to the documentary crew, this will be hopefully good footage, as long as I get a good reception. You know, I was joking to them saying, you never know. The fans might be like, listen, Mike, you've retired. Shut up, sit down. We're not interested in you anymore. Anyway, so I uh, we go downstairs and we're waiting for my cue. I am actually stood in like the tunnel right before where you walk out and I've got the doc documentary crew with me. So I'm taking that opportunity to talk them through how it would feel if you're walking out for a real fight. And then we walk out and, you know, there's a bit of an applause or whatever. And I sit down, I had to wait for a while. And then I thought they were gonna, just going to come and do the thing where they show you on the screen and you give you little thumbs up, you know? Remember when Rockhold did the weird thing with Diaz with the gang signs and stuff? Yeah. I thought it was going to be w one of those, right? And then they start playing this piece. And I'm like, oh, oh, wow, I'm getting a tribute video. This is incredible. And then anytime Rebecca or the children come on the screen, that's when I get really emotional, you know? So then I'm there, and I'm a one-eyed bastard, so I don't see very well at the best of times. And then a little, there may have been a little tear in my eye, so I couldn't really see what it said on the big screen. <laughs> but I saw something about Hall of Fame. And I thought, wow, I'm nominated for the Hall of Fame. And then uh, everybody in the auto arena got on their feet. I got a standing ovation by like 20,000 people. And that wow. was, it, it was pretty incredible. It was, it was. So, you know, I, I cheered and whatnot. I went out, signed a ton of pictures. And then I get back out of the arena, you know, to the backstage part. And some guy with us from uh, UFC is like, so how's it feel? I said, oh, yeah, that was amazing. He said, no, the Hall of Fame. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, you're in the Hall of Fame. I was like, oh, shit. I had no idea. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah. I, I, that's how fucking dumb and Michael Bisping I am. Do you know, I had, I had no idea. So, uh, yeah, thank you to everybody. It was fucking cool, dude. I'll tell you right now. I uh, I was in Jamaica with my girlfriend, and I had Wi-Fi, luckily. And I was like, all right, let me turn the fights on um, now. And I, I think it was the, the third fight, or third to last fight of the night. I was like, I'm going to watch the main, call main. Third last fight, I believe it was between. It was right before the the. I believe it was right before the co-main event, or it might have been before the main event. I don't know, um, but it was definitely between the two, and that came on. And I mean, I'm on the beach trying to look like the man to my girlfriend, but I, so I have to fight back a tear because I don't want to be crying for another man's accomplishments like a fucking pussy as I'm trying to like be the man in a nice Jamaican vacation and make my girlfriend still be able to get wet for me. I'm sitting there bawling yeah, my yeah. eyes out for fucking another <laughs> dude. Um, but it really was I, really so touching. My girl started crying. It was like it, you know, every, everyone in the world. I mean, even everyone on Twitter, everyone, when I posted the picture on uh, Instagram uh, that I saw it, everyone, yeah, literally everyone's like, dude. I fucking cried. I couldn't help but cry. People that aren't even fans of yours were probably crying because it was a very touching thing. And everyone can relate to the everyman sort of journey that you took. It, you know, that story is so fucking great. And I don't think that they've told it enough. I don't think it's been stated enough. I think that was probably one of the first times 
that the UFC sort of laid it all out there, kind of what you did and where it all came from. And, you know, the way they kind of captured how you do everything for your fan. It was great. It really was because that yeah. was sort of, as a friend of yours and as somebody who's obviously a fan but, you know, knows you on a, d a different level, I feel like they really captured the essence of who you are. That whole package and piece was very true. And it, it was kind of cool to kind of culminate your career and to say, holy shit, like, not only that, they the, the fact that they recognize you and everyone is going to sort of look at you f the way that they should – it's fucking great, dude. It really is amazing. It's it's a much bigger thing than just the Hall of Fame. More than anything else, it's kind of cool to see that they really recognize, you know, who you really are. Well, thank you very much, Lucy. I appreciate those words. But it's actually, uh, well, first of all, how self-serving is it, uh, you know, to open this podcast with that video? So my apologies to anybody that's throwing up into their mouth right <laughs> now. And there's a few of them going, oh, my God, this guy, get over yourself. As I say, my apologies. But I am proud of it. And I'm also proud of, as you say, I mean, the response on Twitter and social media, the kind words that were said, it was, it was kind of incredible. It really was. So, uh, as I say, it, truly, truly thankful for that. But it, it is funny because... Uh, Zach Candito, he's the uh, the head of production over at UFC. And he was kind of setting me up and having a little fun because it turns out everybody knew. Everybody knew about it and it was all planned. The commentators knew, production people knew. Apparently they were having meetings and I was about to walk into the room. They were like, stop, 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 he's fucking here. Uh, my wife knew. Fucking, it seemed like everybody knew. Um, so they all kept it very, very good. Oh, your wife actually yeah. knew? Yeah, she knew. She knew as well. Yeah, I had no idea. Um, but so Zachary Candito is, as I say, head of production. The night before, we're at the hotel bar. We're just having a couple of beers. And, you know, I, he's kind of setting me up. He's like, so Mike, you know, Jesus Christ, UFC don't really give you uh, much credit these days, right? And I'm like <laughs> playing into it. And I'm, having, I'm going, yeah, these motherfuckers. You know, maybe one day, maybe one day I get the, uh, the credit or the, the recognition that I deserve and all this, you know. And he just kept like prodding me and giving me more ammunition i'm like yeah these fucking assholes i mean you know you retire and that's that i'm a washed up bum you know he's like yeah keep going mike because tomorrow you're gonna fucking eat your words um but yeah it was great man it really was it's great but, um, you deserve it you really do it's not me just sucking your dick it, it, it's something that i think you know you know even the, the recognition from other fighters, the stuff that Cormier said was very, very nice. And, and just, you know, it was great, dude. It's really cool. You should be yeah. proud of yourself. And you should suck your own dick. Look, anybody in the world. I would. If you... I would if I could. If I could. <laughs> I've tried a couple of times. It's just not, it's just, you know, I'm a little too fat these days. At 185, I could do it. Um, but, uh, and as you said, the fighters that said all those nice things as well, thank you to them. Uh, that what thing that Forrest said, what DC said, oh, everybody, thank you. Um yeah, yeah, you know, kind of crazy. Great, but but uh, I'm here, well, you know, I'm here back home in Clitheroe. We're filming a documentary called Built for This. It's going to be out later in the year. And talk about a perfect ending to the documentary. They were like, oh, my God, there you go. That's the ending of the documentary. So take it care of. So that's good. But as I said, I am back in sunny old Clitheroe, which isn't sunny. It's, uh, pardon me, burping there. Uh, it's rainy. It's wet. It's miserable. Um, I'm in a, I'm not in a hotel. I'm in the guest room of a restaurant. The guys that, that do this, I'm in a restaurant and they've got like, they've got like a, a little tiny apartment block next to it with no room service, no mini bar, no nothing, no food. And I'm in the middle of nowhere. There's like no shops, anything, anywhere close to me. So, um, I don't know why they put me here. I think they were trying to do me a favor, but they really, really have isolated me and they're not staying here either. They're like off in town. I'm like, yeah. why the fuck have you left me alone in the middle of nowhere? But still, um, things could be worse. But um, so you're gonna be in to England for how long now? Like a month? I'm, I'm annoyed because I'm coming to fucking LA in like a week and a half, and I just realized you're not gonna be there when I'm there. I don't get back uh, until April sixth. I'm gonna be around in England. Yeah. My apologies, Louis, for having a life and a family. I do apologize right. for that. But anyway, listen, it's not all about me, surprisingly. Yeah. You there's know what other, I'm going to do? Other, I apologize. There's other things that happen. Uh, oh, Mike, oh, oh, oh. I, I apologize. Cut you off. I'm going to move over a seat because I'm having a really hard time, like, cranking my neck to look at Mike up here. Um, so if you don't mind, I'm just going to just switch my seats and switch microphones yeah, right you, now. Yeah, We're in you, a smaller you studio. do that. 
You do um, that. You do that. Well, well, I just say that Lewis is uh, an, an idiot. You know, he comes in, he sits in the seat, he wasn't happy. Then he changes the seat, he wasn't happy. Now we've started the show, and now, you know, a few minutes into it, he wants to change the seat again. But listen, he's the big boy. He's the big boss man, and if he wants to change seats, who am I to say no, other than hashtag HOF Hall of Famer? I there hear we go. you. I hear you tapping. You're back. So listen, it's not all about me. There was other things that happened at UFC London on Saturday Barely. night. It was... It was actually an epic night of fights. Some incredible fights took place in the weekend. Yeah. And I can't, I can't <laughs> wait to get into them all. I mean, the, the <coughs> one one fight that I know you didn't watch them all, but one fight earlier on that I wasn't too, I wasn't familiar with either lady, to be honest. Molly Meatball McCann. She's a scouser. She's from Liverpool. Fuck me. She had a fight with some, I think she's Brazilian, some woman called Coachara or yeah. something. And they just swung at each other for 15 minutes. It was, it was pretty epic. So that was amazing. <clears throat> we started the night great. The crowd went crazy. Um, and then, as I say, just fantastic nights of fights. Lewis. Uh, I'm not sure what you saw. What was the first fight you saw? The co-main event? No. It was the, What was the third to co-main? What was the uh, Uzdemir? Gunnar and El... No, Gunnar no, and El... Uzdemir and Reyes. I saw Uzdemir and Reyes. And, Nelson? I, and I did see Gunnar and Nelson. So I probably saw four fights that night. All right, Mike, really quick, we should talk about Fulton and Rourke, which is uh, such an incredible company. I, I love the line of colognes they have. I don't wear cologne, Mr. Bisping. You know this. You know I like to go eau de naturel, but they have these incredible, incredible fragrances. Um, it's not like regular cologne where you spray it and you taste it in your mouth. They have these wax-based colognes with this really cool little carrying case. Um, you just rub a little bit on you. It's very subtle, really, really nice, fresh scents. I know they sent you a bunch of different things. You have great hair as well. I'm jealous of the fucking hair products they sent you? Oh, no, absolutely. This stuff that they have, I mean, they have an entire line of grooming products. I mean, fragrance products. You name it, these guys got it. Do please check out their website. You won't be disappointed. I mean, you know, in this modern day and age, you've got to look after yourself. You've got to look good. You've got to be presentable, especially in the age of Instagram. You know, you want to look the part. Uh, but some of my favorite products, uh, the wax-based colognes, we've talked about these before. They're fantastic. They're better than the sprays that come. You know, you can carry it in your pocket, the nice little metal container, throw it in your gym bag, whatever you want to do. You always have it on you. You just scrape a little bit onto your finger, rub it onto your neck. They smell great. Very understated, and, and the smells are fantastic. And uh, as you said, massive, massive line of products. Uh, for example, if you're looking to up your shower routine, their caffeinated shampoo and body wash is a great fragrance that also wakes you up and gets you ready for the day. So mm. you get out of bed in the morning, you're a little tired, you get in the shower, that'll spruce you up a little bit. But then you use their caffeinated shampoo, boom, it's like you're ingesting coffee through the skin, you get out of that shower and you're ready to take that day on Lewis. Oh yeah, tell me about it. I, sometimes I just take, I drink the uh, caffeinated shampoo because I don't have hair, so I'll just take a big <laughs> swig of it and then I feel like, fuck it, dude. Best of both worlds. My breath smells good. Everybody's good. No, but seriously, <laughs> uh, they, they really are great. GQ named their shave cream the best on the market, and they have a, a lot of really great things you should check out. If you go to FultonandRourke.com, that is R-O-A-R-K.com, and use the promo code BYM, you save 15% off your entire purchase. I highly recommend this. Father's Day is coming up. This is a great website to go to if you want to get a great Father's Day gift or if you have your husband or a brother or cousin, whoever it is. These are some great products for men i highly recommend it once again use that promo code bym at fulton and rourke r-o-a-r-k.com